on board amidst gory Kirloskar, the MD at Kirloskar Oil Engines. The stock has had a solid run. In fact, in the last six months itself, the stock is up over 80%. Gauri, hi, good morning. A very warm welcome. It's not very often that we get, uh, talk to you, but um, thank you so much for sparing time and speaking with us today. Thank you. Good morning. So, Gauri, let's start by talking about your 2x, 3y strategy, which simply put for our viewers is the plan to become 2x in terms of revenue over the next three years. But, Gauri, how do you plan to really achieve this milestone? Uh, sure. So, we had an investor meet recently where I articulated this 2x and uh, 3y strategy, which is based on a strong demand that we see arising from various macroeconomic factors uh, converging in our favor and as well as our strategy to meet that demand. So if we talk about uh, the favorable macroeconomic uh, factors that we see, uh, it's rising energy requirements, it's the government's focus on infrastructure development, uh, customer demand patterns are changing, customers want service reach and service quality, uh, technology-enabled conveniences, uh, all of which I believe put us in a strong position. We have a very strong channel when it comes to sales and in the service areas. And we have the ability to actually reach any customer of ours in India within four hours. Um, the next thing is there are emission norms that are kicking in both on the power generation side as well as on the industrial side. And suddenly our products which are uh, made in India uh, can now be sold across the world because they meet most global standards. So this is quite a unique situation for us uh, where we suddenly have the global uh, market open to us. And with that, and as long as, and as well as the interest that we're seeing uh, towards India as a potential hub for manufacturing, many global players uh, are showing interest to coming here. Uh, these are some of the factors that we see at play. Um, so that's one part of it. Our strategy to meet that, uh, I think it's very important for us to figure out what is addressable, what is not addressable, and what do we actually choose to not address, right? So our strategy is hinged on, I'd say, uh, four key pillars. The first one is around core growth in our, um, in our main focus areas where we already have a, quite a strong uh, leadership or market share. Uh, and that is in the internal combustion space, it's in the water management uh, solution space, and it's in the farm space. So our strength is around engineering and manufacturing, uh, and we'll continue to uh, defend our strong position there. The second is uh, technology. So whether we're talking about emissions uh, norms or whether we're talking about moving into alternative fuels, we have to be focused on getting there with the right product at the right time when the customer wants it and at a cost that is tenable to the customer. Uh, so we have a strategy there to either buy, to build, or to borrow. And what I mean by that is, um, when I say buy, I mean that we are in a position today where we have a strong mm. balance sheet uh, with a good amount of cash. Uh, when I say build, I mean we have a strong R&D team, which is in-house, uh, right. that has got us uh, through. And when I say borrow, I mean uh, any key strategic collaborations that we may, may want to get into. And the way that we will decide which one we go uh, into is totally mm -hmm. dependent on time to market cost and the technology that's required at the time. Um, the third one, which I mentioned before, I think is channel. So it's okay. about, you know, encircling our customer and being close to our customer. And the fourth pillar I'd say is people. So um, Coel has been known in the industry to actually own great engineering talent and right. we will continue to invest in people. And I think this is actually one of the most important pillars for us to get right to achieve this ambition. Sure, Gauri, in the interest of time, let me just get directly to the numbers. Then you talked about the global opportunity. So I understand that currently exports form just 10% of the revenue. What could it scale up to and what kind of uh, momentum are you expecting from the entire export market? Sure. So I think that we're quite uniquely poised and I don't say it just as an aspiration, but um, I think there are some uh, key factors. You know, one, we're known for our engineering and manufacturing. Uh, we have the experience of developing world-class products from India to the world. Uh, again, the current geopolitical situation, as well as the emission norms kicking in and the interest from global players that we're seeing uh, make me say that uh, exports will be a key factor to the growth that we um, that we expect. So today we're at about 10%. Uh, the, the aspiration is to get to at least uh, 30%. Um, we're seeing multiple business cases and opportunities. Uh, but we have to figure out where we want to go. Uh, and I say this because uh, the industry has long incubation periods, whether it's in product development, 
whether it's in product certification or in building channels for aftermarket. Uh, so we have various options in front of us in terms of uh, ways we can go and um, and you know and that that should play out. Hi there, Gauri Avan as well joining in on the discussion. Let's also understand a little bit more about your numbers when it comes to margins because um, largely owing to the commodity inflation, a lot of corporates have been impacted due to it. So what's the margin outlook now? Do you think that we can expect the mid-teen levels for your margins over the next few years? Uh, so good question. So if you look at us over the last uh, couple of quarters, we have been delivering strong numbers, both in terms of the top line and as well as margins. So this is a result of, you know, strong demand, our ability to meet that demand in terms of products and capacity. Uh, a strong supply chain uh, is very, very important here, especially in this environment. And of course, our ability to be nimble and agile and also handle uh, price changes that are happening in the market. So um, having said this, you know, the margins in our business uh, exist in exports, they exist in the aftermarket business, and they uh, exist as we move into a higher horsepower range on the engine side, and we have a clear strategy to do just this. All right, that's a view coming in on your overall margin picture. Um, let's also talk about, you know, venturing into new businesses because that's something that you've been looking at closely, biogas management system, the induction motor side as well. What's the update here? And more importantly, what kind of revenue potential do you see? Sure. So I think you're referring to our organic waste composter product um, and as well as the motors business. So ESG is a key focus area for us at Kirloskar Oil Engines. Uh, so composting actually helps to reduce greenhouse gas emissions uh, and food waste and waste generation are actually estimated at 8 to 10 percent of global greenhouse emissions. So the idea of promoting an organic waste composter, which essentially converts food waste into a nutrient rich soil, uh, was to provide a green solution um, with the impet impetus towards ESG. Um, and uh, I think that we expect this market to pick up in time. Uh, it's it's not uh, something that you know is a, something that is a pull from the market today, but it's concept selling. Uh, so, for example, now new residential societies are already required to purchase such products. Uh, so we'll see that growth over time. On the motor side, we've started with uh, low voltage AC induction three phase motors. And we will be expanding our product range into a larger range, whether it's single phase and customized motors. So here the strategy is our brand equity is very strong in core engineered products, right? And uh, we have an existing channel and service presence that we can leverage. And in fact, in several segments, the customer base is common uh, with our power generation as well as our industrial businesses. So at the moment, we're focusing on developing the product range and the product portfolio. And in time, I expect that we will be able to strengthen our presence in this market. Okay, Gauri, and just before we let you go, just wanted to understand one more thing. We have been talking about uh, the export opportunity, the industrial opportunity, but what about the agribusiness? Because the commentary that we are hearing still suggests that rural recovery is a bit subdued. What are the trends that you are uh, witnessing there? Um, sure. So um, on the uh, rural demand, so we're in two segments uh, in the rural economy. We're in pumps and we're in farm mechanization. Uh, and the drivers for both of these uh, businesses is a bit different. So in pumps, the monsoon pa pattern plays a big factor. And as we've seen and all witnessed, the intensity, the erratic nature of the monsoon, the prolonged nature of the monsoon uh, has actually seen an impact in demand and it has negatively affected pump sales across the industry. Um, farm mechanization, on the other hand, uh, really follows the same trends as it does for the tractor market. And uh, according to uh, CM data, it's uh, seen a pretty vibrant growth uh, over the last year. The sales are also uh, very much driven by the availability of financing, which has been pretty healthy. But having said this, I think that uh, we have to keep a close watch on um, inflationary pressure, especially around food inflation uh, that may be coming in the coming months, uh, because while, of course, it has an impact on the overall economy, on the rural side especially, it may have uh, a pretty significant impact on uh, consumer spending. Okay, Gauri, we'll let you go on that note. Really appreciate your time and speaking with ET now today.